Life of Chance podcasters, I am stoked to introduce you, Adiana Talakai. Adi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Enjoying Japan. In Japan, yes. So I'm stoked to be able to stay connected with my Wallaroos fam and friends um, whilst I'm still over, over the other side. Well, not over the other side of the world, but, you know, in Asia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> What we're going to do, start with a few quick fire questions and let's get into it. Ooh. All right. What's your nickname? Addy. Um, your first rugby club? Maroubra Magics. Playing 15s or 7s? Uh, playing 7s. Yeah, nice girl. What age did you start playing rugby? Uh, rugby Union, Rugby League. Oh, either. I started playing when I was four. Rugby league. Awesome. Yeah. Um, when did you debut for the Wallaroos? Uh, 2022. Yeah. Against? Yeah. Against uh, Fiji at, I think it was Allianz Stadium. Someone correct me there. But no, nah, it was um, it was a good experience. Pretty memorable one, I think. Yeah. What's your cut yeah. number? Uh, 182. Nice. Heroes growing up. Did you have any heroes? Uh, no, not really. As a black, uh, inspiration people. Uh, Maya Angela was pretty cool. Yeah. I liked her. Yeah. Yeah. So I they thought she. To, they don't have to be women, but yeah. No, like um, I think she was probably uh one of my like, um, most inspirational people I've like throughout high school. I really loved um, reading about her, reading her poems and things like that. Um, like that. Nice. Yeah. Um, what do you do outside of rugby? What are your hobbies? Um, I like to read. I've been reading a lot lately. Um, when I have time, I'd like to go on a hike and spend some time with friends at the beach. The beach is probably the most important one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, favorite song? or music that you're listening to at the moment? Ah, oh, damn. Um, Agora Hills by Doja Cat. Nice. That's pretty, like, the current song that I'm on at the moment. Good. Uh, if you could be any animal, what would it be and why? Uh, probably a... Uh, I don't even know what the thing is called, but it's called, like a whale shark. Yeah. Maybe. I don't, oh, no, an orca, an orca. Why? Because they're really big in the ocean, but they're also, like, really dangerous and re they work t really well together as a pack. So. Nice. Pack mentality, but also kind of scary. Kind of scary, yeah. Like, like, like don't, don't mess with me, but I'm also part of a team. Yeah. I like also, that. they're in the water, so that's fun. Yeah. Um, what is your biggest pet hate or like thing that pisses you off when you're on tour with people? Um, when I'm on tour with people, I think I do this quite often. Actually, there's two things. There's, yeah, I do this quite often, but it's people now that we've got a, a list of strap, a strapping list. Yeah. So you can, you go in when it's your turn to get strapped. People who push in front. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. But I, I do do that. I do push it in front when I see the opportunity. Also, people screaming at 7 a.m. is not <laughs> I'm not a fan. Read the room. Yeah, but it's okay. We get used to it after a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, beach or snow? Beach. Early morning or late night? Late night. Interesting. <laughs> I would have thought you would say early morning. Um, night in or night out? Night in. Night in? Night in. <laughs> you got it. Night in. Yeah. Night in. Birthday or Christmas? Birthday. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Uh, how many surgeries have you had? Uh, two. What were they? Um, so I got my right knee ACL Rico yep. um, in 2015 and a 
tightrope uh, fixation on my in the my syndesmosis. Nice. So I've got yeah three nylon strings holding my right leg together. <laughs> How do you sleep? Like, do you lie on your back? Do you lie on your front side? I lie on my side and I try to stay there, but I end up like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what piece of advice would you give your younger self? Um, have a little bit more courage to try a little bit harder because it's going to be hard, but you just have to have the courage to push, push yourself even when it hurts. So just that courage to throw yourself in the deep end yeah. and know that you'll come okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice, Addy. You've, you've passed the quick fire questions. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how quick fire they were, but. No, that's all right. It's just a, a list of questions to, you know, calm you down a little bit. Relax yeah. the nerves. Relax the nerves. Um, so, I, although I feel like you probably don't need your nerves relaxed as much now that you do panels and <sighs> speaking all the time, you're a bit of a practice these days. I've only done two, two in the past week, and that's the only two that I've done in my whole whole entire life. <laughs> How were they, and what were they? What were they? Um, so a couple of days ago on Thursday, Sydney Australia time, I uh, spoke at the Rupa um, panel, so that was pretty cool. A um, bunch of uh, old rugby players, sponsors, important people were in the room. A couple hundred people there, so that was um, my first thrown in the deep end moment for um public speaking i guess yeah. and then that was really cool i really enjoyed that and then the second one was um at a new south wales sport tongan sports association thing um i was also on the panel there and i was on there with um Monia gerard uh a diamonds uh australian diamonds netball player and it was really cool to um have yarns with her and share the stage so that was pretty yeah that's awesome. That was cool. Yeah. I think she's also just played for Tonga as well, hasn't she? She played the most recent yeah. World Cup in for Tonga. Yeah, and it was the first time they've ever qualified um, for the World Cup. And she came out of retirement to go and play for them as well. Um, she spoke about how her, um, like, although she played the main part of her athletic career for the Diamonds, she did want to promise her mum to go and play for Tonga at some point and so she did um which was really cool for her I think and her family so yeah beautiful so you've obviously got um Tongan Tongan heritage yourself you are Tongan Australian yeah. Hong Tongan yeah uh talk us through like culture and Tonga like what is that where does that sort of fit into your life how do you connect with it um i think it's um language is a big part um i think of for me of connecting with culture um at home it's like my mom and my parents and that speak tongan to me all the time they probably get a little bit annoyed when i reply back in english but um just a bit of a habit but i think it's important for me to like continuously learn the language as well like i'm not super um fluent in it but i think like for me and further on down the track like that'll pay off dividends like I want to be able to pass that on to my kids and things like that so yeah um my mum is all about um I'm not too sure if you know what it is but like collecting mats um which is super important for like the Tongan culture when we have special events and things like that um it's almost a a sign of like a sign of respect and a little bit of that there's a little bit of significance to um having that um, on show for um, that event. So, yeah, we, we do get a lot of those and um, my mum kind of, like, teaches me how to fold them and things like that because they're so big and the importance of what mat is this for and what mat's that for, what you can and can't do. So it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And you're one of five, is that right? One of five kids? One of five kids. Yeah, the middle gal, two older brothers, one younger brother, one younger sister. And correct me if I'm wrong, but all five of you currently play rugby league or rugby union. Yeah. Um, so the older two and I and my younger brother, uh, we both, we all play uh, rugby union. And my younger sister, she plays rugby league, but we'll get her over to the dark side in a bit. So 
<laughs> yeah, so your two your two older brothers, Sam and Chris, both play professional rugby. Chris yeah. is in France, is that right? Yeah. And Sammy's in where's he now? Melbourne. Um yeah, Sam's in um at the Melbourne Rebels at the moment. I think he's got maybe another year left. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, he's he's there for the next year. Yeah. And then you play for? I play um, well currently for the Wallaroos and uh, uh, New South Wales Waratahs and we're just about to head into pre-season. And my younger brother, he plays for the New South Wales Tongan team and he also plays for Randwick, but I think they're um, in the off-season at the moment. Yeah. We'll get him over to Sydney too, so don't worry about that. Gonna say, but <laughs> did you used to stand on the sidelines and and cheer in the bright Sydney Uni blue and gold hoops. But um, seen some Randwick shorts on him recently. Yeah, don't worry, we'll swap them out soon. Nice. All right, now onto you and your rugby journey. So you said you started playing league at four. Yeah. Did you, at as a four year old girl, go? Do you remember think, thinking, yeah, this is the sport I'm going to play for the rest of my life? Or how did it sort of, how did you um, get where you are now? I don't know. I, I think um, when we were kids, like, there's like a bunch of us cousins who always just like went to the park and played footy. Like, we didn't have like, like, it's probably different now to like kids nowadays who have phones and things. Um, but we just like basically had each other. And so we would go to the park. We would either pick up a shoe or a ball and then we would um, go and play footy in the park. And then I, th I think like um, like my auntie and my mom, they kind of were like, oh, should we put them like in a team and go and play, let, let them play like actual like rugby league and stuff. Um, so me and my cousin, we went and played in the same um, mascot Jets team, which is cool. And then um, I don't know, I kind of just um, – I didn't really think of it like, oh, I'm going to play this for the rest of my life, but more so just like a, th a fun thing. Like I get to meet new people and like play with my cousins and, you know, have a fun time as a four-year-old. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so from four playing rugby league, then you moved into rugby union playing for Randwick Magic a little bit later or? Yeah. Um. So I played league from when I was four till I was 12. Um, and at that time, like, you couldn't play past 12 years old um, if you were a girl. So then I had, had a little bit of a break. And, uh, Did you play another sport? No, I, I didn't. Oh, at that time I was playing, like, in the time that I was playing league, I was also playing netball. Yeah. So league on Sundays, um, netball on Saturdays. It was a bit of, like, a, a deal that I had to have with my mom, like, if I wanted to keep playing league, so... And then I had a little bit of a break and I didn't want to play netball if I wasn't playing league. It was kind of like a package deal. Um, later on, I picked up sevens when I was in year eight, nine, and then kind of went on, took off from there. Um, I enjoyed that. Met a lot of girls that I currently play with now. Um, actually, I, I've grown up a lot knowing Bessie. Yeah. Um, and I played with Bessie in, um, at Moobra Magic's. But um, she was in a, a different age group than me. and um, But it was just cool to see that. I played with her then and then yeah. now I play with her now. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then sevens, I uh, continued that um, until 2016. I injured my knee. Um, that still put me out for life. Still for Randwick? Yeah, I was still playing for Randwick. And then I think... Like that put me out for the rest of the year and the rest of 2017. Actually, really funny. I <laughs> went to Sydney Uni in 2017 um, and I thought that I could just play even though I didn't really do much of the rehab and they sat me out for the whole year to make sure that I did my rehab. <laughs> who, which who, is, who was uh, in charge of that decision? Who made that decision? Um, Mel Tree. Yep. So she was in yeah. the time. She was the physio at the time and um, I don't think she knew that I didn't do, like my rehab wasn't as like well done before, but I think she just kind of had a bit of like a, a checklist, like you can't do this, okay, you have to do this and this, okay, like you can't do this and so therefore like it kind of trickled down to like 
Addy, if you're not doing the work, I can't put you on the field. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. So that was a bit of a kick up the bum, like, you know, signed to play up for, um, for this great team for like a whole year. And then I got sidelined because I didn't do the work. And that was a bit of like a kick up the bum. So then I came back and I played um, in 2018 and I did my syndesmosis that year, <laughs> which was kind of like another setback. But in my mind, it kind of just didn't feel like a setback. It kind of just felt like all oh, this happens. And so I rehabilitated, came back from then and then played a couple more years. And then uh, I think it was 2020, ended up um, getting selected to play for the Waratahs. And then 2021 or two, I think it was before COVID, uh, one of the, uh, the, um, the Wallaroos head coach at the time, um, Dwayne, he gave me a call and he, asked me if I wanted to be part of the wider squad and I was like, yeah. And then COVID hit and then after COVID um, we all came back together and yeah, a bit of it's history now. So that's a little bit about me. Nice. And what made you change uh, from sevens to fifteens? Was the, I assume the move from Randwick Magic to Sydney Uni was because you wanted to play fifteens? Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely um, because I wanted to play 15s. I also felt like, like at the time, it was just for fun. It was like, oh, yeah, I get to be around my mates a lot more and I get to hang out with them and whatever. But I definitely knew at that time, I was like, I'm not a body built for sevens. (laughs) Uh, This is not running, you know, sprinting 100 metres. You know, I'm not doing that for seven minutes. (laughs) So, yeah. yeah, That's one of them. Yeah. And then you debuted for Australia in 2022. And then yep. what? Um, debuted for Australia in 2022. I think, like, we oh, we went to the World Cup in 2022. Also, a really cool fact, um, my brother also debuted for Australia in that year in the spring tour. So that was pretty cool. cool. So um, two Talakai's playing for their country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was um, a pretty cool moment, I thought. Like, and at the time, I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, like I was like, oh, I this cool. yeah, he gets to debut too. But then I was like, yeah, but I debuted too. So, um, no, nah, it was a pretty cool moment. Um, also, going to the World Cup, that was an experience. Like, I'll never forget that. That was a pretty cool, um, I, I think, moment, especially the World Cup opener that year. That was probably one of the highlights of my career, even though that we didn't really come away from the win, but it was just the experience of like, like certain moments in that game. That was pretty cool. And then 2023, here we are building and I'm loving it. Just came away from a big tour. So um, a pretty, I would say successful ish tour. So I'm pretty happy with that and how we came away. So yeah. Nice. Very exciting. So when you are, not playing rugby what have you been doing with your time I know you're not working at the moment as much but say last year in the lead up to the world cup I I know you were slaving away at the same time (laughs) yeah so which is like so different like if like this year compared to last year last year I was um kind of working two jobs I guess I was doing a little bit of laboring on the side and basically I was um behind the um bar a lot um so my day usually would look like um like I'd go to training and then if I actually know it I would start if I was laboring that day I'd go laboring wake up at like 5 30 in the morning go and um I don't know get on the get on the jackhammer I don't know do some demos and things like that dig holes trenching that was pretty fun not gonna lie um and then would finish that at maybe like 3 30 4 o'clock and then head off to training and if I wasn't laboring that day then I was at um what do you call it I was working behind the bar which was a bit lighter on the body but just a bit more social interaction levels that really got me tired throughout the day um and then on the weekends were a bit harder sometimes I would do doubles, so I would work labouring and then I would go and work behind the bar that night. Um, learned later on that year that that wasn't conducive to a professional athlete and I needed to um, either drop one or both or, I don't know, figure out what was best for me in that um, situation. So, 
um, it wasn't slaving away <laughs> and as I learned this year and I ended up quitting my job I think around uh, June July I was I think I just I wanted to focus a bit more and I like I knew that I wasn't putting my time in the in the places that it needed to be put in so yeah from a rugby perspective oh from a rugby perspective yeah so, so you took a chance basically you've taken a chance on on financial security to yep. prioritize your rugby to prioritize my rugby yes i am yeah. um I, th- I think it paid off yeah i think Maybe. it's paying off for sure no doubt yeah, yeah. i think it, um it's um yeah take a chance or taking a chance yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that was my my subtle lead into my question that's going to be um <laughs> Is there a time where you think back and go, yeah, I've definitely taken a chance on something in life um, and it's paid off? It doesn't have to be rugby related. It could be rugby related. Mm, I think it was, um, well, it is rugby related. Um, When I was in 2017, I was at uni at that time and I didn't really like in my life where I was at and I didn't know what to do. And I kind of was like, Oh, I don't know anyone except for people like from high school. And I wanted to meet more people and things like that. Um, and I wanted to do some social activities and like find people who I have com- things in common with. And then, so I decided to join um, the Sydney uni um, women's rugby team, which was probably something that I didn't think that at the time that I was going to be like, playing for Australia like in the future but I think that in itself really set me up for where I am today and at that time I didn't even know like my brothers didn't really help me like go and be like hey you should join this team um but like it was like almost like a thing I did for myself and I was like I'm pretty proud that I took that chance and it's set me up really well so yeah nice and have you got (laughs) any have you sort of thought of any times where you're like now that person has definitely taken a chance on me like when like someone's gone out on a limb to do something for you when they didn't necessarily need to but it's really like helped you with life it might be rugby it might be work or family I think um oh there's a couple yeah there's probably a couple maybe only two people uh, not two people, but like I'll kind of generalize it here. So um, I think my brothers have taken a really big, I think a really big chance of me by um, like, I, I get it. Like, you know, they're your brothers, like, you know, they're supposed to help you anyways, but like the way that I feel like they've gone out of their way to um, watch my trainings, watch my games and analyze what I'm doing and what I can um, be better at basically being my like, side coaches and like helping me like my private little coaches and helping me feeding me tips and ideas and things like that um both on on for like to help me both on the field and off the field like like they also help me check my attitude when I'm going into training and things like that so um I think though um those boys have really helped me even though if they might not know it I think they've helped me a lot and um I like, I'm pretty privileged to have those, um, like, to have my brothers look after me like that. Also, my manager from work. <laughs> yeah. You, like, Which job? the amount, um, oh, for, uh, what do you call it, the bartending job? Yeah. Um, like, both my managers, Danielle and Ross. The amount of time I've, like, I know I'm a casual worker, whatever, but, like, the amount of time they've, like, um, they were like, yeah, just take it off. It's fine. You're going away for three weeks and whoa. In my time off, like taking time off work. And and there have been times where I've like asked them, I'm like, why do you like, why are you so lenient to me, towards me? Like I know like with other people in the, like in our team, like we, you don't give them as much leniency and they they were like, because you're, you're about to be a rugby star. You don't know it. Like, but you're like, we're like, we have full, like, um, belief in you and so like for them like to give me that amount of time off like at that time I was just like oh yeah I, I'm, I'm just going to use and abuse this but like looking back on it now I'm like these blokes really helped me more than I think 
like they were just so flexible like being able to take four weeks off work six weeks off work and then come back and know that I still have a job and even when like in my contract that <laughs> doesn't really like it doesn't say that like I could literally be let off whenever um and for them to um take that chance and you know give me what I needed for for that that was um pretty cool and I think I um I do I I a part of that I'm like I don't want to put that um to waste that they've put belief in me and you know they've done things out of their own um their own I guess time so yeah, yeah. that's so nice it's like it's isn't it nice to think back and go like I have some solid people in my corner and they didn't mm. need to be in my corner like they had they had every right to sort of walk away from me and and replace me with someone else. Um, but to know that you've got like great employers that become almost, you know, like friends and mentors in a way because they believe in you so much that you like you're empowered to be there. It makes you want to work hard when you are at work because you're like, mm. they, they're looking after me, but then you're also being looked after and being able to be the best that you can be when you're not at work and you're doing what you want to do, which is rugby. So that's, that's pretty special. Yeah, no, it was. Um, and just like kind of like looking back at it now, like when I first started work, I would literally rock up late so many times. I wouldn't like, I'd be on my phone and then like, I guess like they've also helped me like develop as a person, like, you know, um, like, and they didn't have to do that. Like they could have just fired me when I rocked up 90 minutes late to work anyways, but they were like, no, you're going to say, you're going to stay here. You're going to work and like they kind of like took me on their took me under their reins and um kind of helped me a lot and I still like like I I just got back there now but a lot of them have moved on and things like that so I but I still like you know catch up with them like catch up and have yarns like see where they're at and so yeah, like you said um they didn't have to do that for me they could have just like been like nah go find somewhere else to work yeah but they didn't and I'm super grateful for that yeah that's really special. So what, like I've watched Addy Talakai grow from a a young girl in that 20, was it 2017, 2018 period where you you came to training at Sydney Uni um, and I've watched you you grow literally <laughs> physically and <laughs> emotionally. Um, yeah. I have a fond memory that I giggle with you about uh and I think it must have been, I thought it was earlier than 2017, but it must have been 2017 or 2018 where we were, I lined up to do a drill and I felt like I was still pretty fresh in the rugby world um, when I was doing this drill. And it was a two on one drill where two people made like a top tackle on one, one ball carrier and Addy lined up against me and Barbara Woodell, um, oh, yeah. number nine, uh her and I were similar sizes and Addy looked at us and went can you please go easy on me and Barbara <laughs> and I looked at each other like there is this strong Tongan hooker running <laughs> at us <laughs> and they and she wants us to go easy on her <laughs> she's gonna kill us <laughs> um but I guess like looking back on that now with the context of your knee again I'm like maybe it's because you were coming back from from an injury and you're a little bit unsure of yourself but in the same breath I remember watching you that that season in training like when whenever you did anything you did it with 100% intent and the beauty is nothing like that has changed yeah. <laughs> in our group chat is bodies in front because <laughs> you're not really clear on the whole like 50 percent idea it's it's 100 or nothing for Eddie and I I love that about you um yeah. obviously that's a bit of a joke you do know how to um control it all now but couple of reminders off like, kickoff level two contact level two contact yeah, level two contact, please, please. <laughs> Addy, it's in front, not full contact. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I've watched, I've watched you. I feel like you haven't really, um, I haven't probably haven't given you enough opportunity to celebrate how hard you do work right now. But like this girl, Addy Talakai, trains so hard. Like you're persistent in the way you 
have a ball in your hand and you practice your throwing, you know, like hooking is obviously a, a unique skill, um, but you are always at TARS with a ball, throwing it at a post or ball in hands, practicing little little flicks. I don't even know what, what hookers hooker's skills are but yeah all your hand stuff I've, I've I've been around you whilst you geek out in conversation with other hookers from around the world um on technique and how how each of you sort of manage your own skill or work on on the delivery and I think it's it's unbelievable you you're in the gym all the time you know if I turn around and say hey I want to do speed you're like boom I want to do speed too like the, your your willingness to learn to grow to to do extra tackle practice, to work on breakdown work or scrum set, like whatever it is, you're like so willing to be there and to be a part of it. And I I admire that about you. Oh, thank you. Um, I think that is just like not doing that for like my team. Like I just, I love my team so much and I want to be good for them, but I also want to be good for myself too. So, yeah. Thank you, Chan. You're very much uh, encompassing the animal that you wished to be. Um, <laughs> when you said it, I was like, wow, this is, this, this is your spirit animal. It really is. I thought you'd say an otter, but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> like a little otter, yeah. <laughs> I did look otter, yeah. Um, I just want to quickly, I uh, might just pause it there. Should we? So just before we wrap this up, Addy, I just want to um, jump into what you you referenced early, that earlier that you love reading and I know that you love reading and you have an incredible um, retention of interesting information, particularly around <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a queen in some uh, circles. I know you have yeah. your mini teams through to uh, great success in a trivia because this whole such weird facts. Anyway, what have you been reading recently? Um, it's actually an old book um, that I keep picking up and putting down, and I'm rereading it again. It's called um, Beyond Wealth by I think Alexander Green. Okay. Um, it definitely has nothing to do with um, money and get rich quick um, schemes and things like that. It's more so the wealth of life. Okay. Um, and it talks about like just, uh, yeah, wealth of life and things that you should like has a little bit of, it's a bit of like a self-help book, but also a bit of like a history lesson kind of in that bit of philosophy in it. So I would highly, highly recommend if you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not your type of book you would want to read, but it's a, it's more, yeah, it really gets me thinking a little bit. Yeah, cool. We walked into a really um, <laughs> odd bookstore in, where were we? Was it in Dunedin? Oh, the second. What was it? Second yeah, week. I think it was, yeah. Um, and saw some very interesting philosophy and history and religious <laughs> and ma magical books. What are, yeah. if you're not reading um, about history, what are you reading about or philosophy? What are you reading about? Um, uh, probably a biography or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really um, venture out into the the fiction world too much. Maybe I need to take a chance and do that. I, you know, I think what works for you works for you. Reading is something that's supposed to be, you know, lets you be in your own space and and do what your mind needs to, to do and if that's what if the books you're reading does that for you there's no need to go to fiction. <laughs> yeah fair um yeah I think um a biography or I feel like I always just read a lot of either history uh philosophy or maybe even sometimes like your self-help book like here and there yeah but I think those are the main three things I cycle yeah. through and you listen to podcasts as well yeah I actually listened to a podcast that um, I think you recommended. Um, it's called How to Take Over the World. Yes. And I actually just finished um, listening to the Wright Brothers um, episodes, um, which was really funny enough. I was uh, listening to that while at the beach and obviously, like, there's heaps of seagulls. If you know who the Wright Brothers are, the Wright Brothers are basically the, um, the blokes who, I guess, invented the airplane, I'm pretty sure, or come up with the idea of the, um, like, 
flying and things like that. Oh. It's really interesting, yeah, to see like how they watched the birds and how they kind of correlate that into an aeroplane, like move that idea, yeah, or use that observations of watching a bird and put that into an aeroplane. So, oh, magic. It's- it's pretty cool. Like, yeah, another interesting fact that I wanted to, yeah. Yeah, cool. And do do you know, okay, Addie in five years' time, where is she? What year is it? 2023? Ah, uh, well, hopefully we'll have just won a World Cup in 2020. Oh, no. That's 27, that's it. Oh, I don't know. What would I be doing? Boy, 27 is a boys' World Cup. Okay, let's say let's yeah. say 2030 then. It's not a nice year, but let's say it's not, what is it, seven years away. What are you doing in seven years' time? Post-2029 um, post World Cup at home. At home. I am. Still bro, I'd like to hope that I'm still playing rugby, but hopefully at that time I'm kicking my feet up reading a good book and just I don't know enjoying some like a little bit of freedom fresh air I don't know it sounds really it sounds really cliche but I kind of just want to be chilling at that time um you know on a beach maybe in a holiday house um and just have you are you are you a full-time rugby player in 2030 I am a full-time I'm a full-time rugby player I'm just on holidays at that at that moment and hopefully a little bit of a break then um but yeah nice and you <laughs> you mentioned that you started studying something at uni yeah what was it um oh i was studying medical science at that time and you go back to studying ever i i really want to but like with all these other life experiences that i've had i've kind of like kind of like dabbled my foot in different areas of life that I'm also like oh I don't know what I want to do do I want to do that do I want to do this do I want to do that so it's almost it's a bit like I'm a bit of a crossroads here kind of trying to figure out which path to take and which one to commit to yeah Um, just ride the wave hey see what happens yeah yeah but hopefully I figure out what I want to do post rugby quick that way that I can kind of slowly start setting myself up for that yeah yeah Love it. Addy, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm sure the listeners have thoroughly enjoyed understanding what goes on in the head of Addy Talakai. <laughs> have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Chance. <laughs>